Okay, this is going to be a walkthrough on how to get uh, Fedora 23 running on Windows 10 using Windows Subsystem for Linux. I did a video showing that this works uh, before, but it was quick and really didn't show you how to do it. This is going to be a more in-depth walkthrough on how you can do this from, from beginning to end. So uh, where I started was I need a Fedora user space um, and preferably one that doesn't require doesn't have a lot of assumptions built in for systemd since you're not going to have an init system inside this environment. Uh, the user space that was nicely packaged already that doesn't have any systemd assumptions in it is the Docker uh, compose that uh, that Fedora builds. So here, right here, uh, I've got the Koji website up, which is where they do uh, <clears throat> builds, create images of uh, the Docker base, and this is what. Uh, the Docker image upstream uses when you pull like the Fedora 23 tag. So, um, but inside those Docker images, there's just this tar, um, this tar file here. So, and this is just a tar ball of, it's got some metadata in it for Docker, but it's basically a tar ball of the root file system. So where I'm going to start, I'm going to start by downloading this. All right. And then I'm going to get to a shell here. And downloads. All right. I've already downloaded this one, so I'll delete the other one. Okay. So let me start with what you're going to have here. Uh, if we, uh, so you're going to want to do most of this as root. The reason is, uh, when, when you untar these files at the end, we're going to tar them back up and we need to preserve, um, root, root ownership of these files throughout the whole thing. Otherwise you'll get a tar ball in the end. That's, uh, got the user ID of your, your non root user. And when you extract that in windows, it will, it'll flip out because it expects the files to be owned by root. So we're going to just uh, jump in as root and go to my downloads directory here. We're just going to extract this file, like uh, preserving the permissions. Okay. And that gives us uh, this repositories file and then a, you know, a hash of a, a really long hash, uh, depending on what version of the Docker base you download. Um, that has changes, but there will always be one directory here. Go in here, and you've got this layer tar. We're going to extract that. Um, that doesn't have a subdirectory into it. That's This is the one that contains our root file system. So we're going to make a directory here called rootfs. We're going to cd into it, and then we're going to untar with preserving permissions that layer tar file. Okay, and here we get our root file system. So this is the root file system that we're going to use to overwrite the Ubuntu uh, root file system in Windows. Uh, now there's we're going to kind of use the Fedora environment, uh, the um, Ubuntu environment, to bootstrap the Fedora one, and we're just going to overwrite certain directories here. So uh, I'm going to I'm going to create a tar file that only includes certain parts of the root file system. And the parts are these. So what this does here, um, for some reason, so the, the only program in Windows that can uh, recreate symlinks properly is this lxrun.exe. Um, unfortunately, it's hard coded to use the Ubuntu tarball right now. So we can't leverage that. And I don't know of another program in Windows that will accurately create symlinks. NTFS supports symlinks. So it was a newer feature as of some version of NTFS, but like 7-zip and things like that, they don't know how to do it. So uh, what this H option in the tar does is uh, create hard links for every symlink it, it creates. And hard links, it understands, and those work fine. Uh, if so, someone knows a better way around this, this is just what I came up with, and it doesn't you know, duplicate the files. So we're going to create this rootfs.tar that uh, create that incorporates our Etsy user var and then bin lib, lib64, and sbin are all just sim links, soon to be hard links into slash user. So we'll do that. And you get a few errors on this. It's no big deal. Um, 
in the end, you still get your root fs.tar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that to a, um, I'm going to, I've got a Samba share that uh, I'm going to pull this from. That's how I'm going to get the file from here to Windows. So I'm going to copy uh, root fs to, um, yes, to this Samba share. Okay, and then we're going to move over to Windows. So here we've got, we're going to go into the file manager. However you choose to get this file onto your system, uh, you know, you do whatever you want. Here's my, that file that I just created. I'm going to pull it over on my desktop. All right. So the next thing to do is I've, uh, I've not installed the bash shell on here yet. So we're going to go into command bash. Uh, yes. So it's going to download. Uh, so it says downloading from the Windows Store. That's not true right now. Right now, all it does is go into Azure and download a rootfs tarball and a Ubuntu bash icon file. That's what it's doing here in the background. And uh, if I can get this up before. Uh, Oop, goodness. Jittery. Before it stops. Can see that um, here this LX run. That's what's doing the um, decompression of the Ubuntu root FS right now, and that is the only program that I know of that can create these symlinks accurately. Um, but like I said, because it's hard coded to uh, unpack the Ubuntu tarball, I can't figure out a way to leverage that yet. If anybody figures it out, let me know, please. This will be done soon. Very soon, I believe. There we go. Okay, so now we're in our uh, our bash environment here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to copy this rootfs tar from our Windows desktop into root's home inside this environment. So it drops us into our uh, you know user. So you can just cd to desktop and you're there, and then copy root to uh, to your home. And now it's here. And then the next thing to do is to uh, unpack. That. I'm just gonna unpack it locally here in Root's home directory. Again, said should be done soon. All right. There we go. Now we've got all those pieces uh, of the of the Fedora root file system unpacked into our rootfs. Um, so now we can uh, exit out of this and open up the file manager. And the path to where all this stuff is stored is um, this one here. So you can see it's under app data, which is hidden local. I don't think it's hidden. This might be hidden. So there's hidden directories all along in here. And there's actually one in here that you don't see called rootfs. So this is your slash home mount and any uh, non-root users information would be in there. This is your root home directory. If we go in there, you can see these uh, the parts of the Fedora root file system that we extracted. And if we go up here and manually type in root root fs we can see the root file system of that uh, of the linux of the ubuntu environment so what we're going to do here is we're just going to like uh, replace parts of the uh, existing ubuntu file system with that of fedora so we're going to come in and remove all the directories that we extracted that we're going to overwrite spin here Etsy. All right, so we're just going to shift delete. That way they don't go to the recycle bin. We can just get rid of them entirely. And 
at the end of this, you get some errors uh, about not being able to re remove some things. I just do uh, do this for all items, skip, and then it leaves your user directory around. If you just do shift delete again, it actually removes it. Uh, that's what it is for you. Um, so now what I did was I moved up a level. I'm going to go into roots home, grab these pieces, cut, go back to root FS and paste them in. All right. So we just replaced the parts we deleted with pieces from the uh, Fedora root file system. Now we go into command bash. And now if we do a cat, let's see. Door release, we see that we're there. And if I run DNF, it's there. So basically we've used the Ubuntu environment to bootstrap the Fedora one. And for you know all the all the definitions that matter, this is now Fedora. So from here, um, if you try to do a like a DNF install wget, for example, it's gonna try to fetch the metadata, um, which isn't going to work because I haven't set my Resolve comp yet. So we're going to go in here. It's not generated by Network Manager. And uh, just you can use Google's. All right. And we will do a DNF install wget. And it's going to try to pull down the metadata. This fails. The reason this fails is because uh, the Python library uh, assumes that this is Linux because it's trying to emulate a uh, Linux environment. And Windows uses a driver called lxcore.sys to translate Linux system calls into Windows system calls. But there's not a wonder, uh, there's not a mapping for every Linux syscall yet. And one of the syscalls is list x adder, and DNF attempts that syscall here, and it errors out. And uh, this is kind of common. If you hit a syscall that isn't mat that isn't translated yet, you'll get this invalid argument. If you see that, that's kind of a an indicator that you your program is making a system call that isn't supported by the LX core yet. So I found some hacks in the, in the DNF code. Uh, for this one, the file you want to get to is, have it off to the side here so I don't make typos. Let me go to, let me VI. Here, oh, that's not good at all. Uh, let's just roll the dice. Lib Python uh, site. No, no, this is lib sixty four Python uh, sh util. All right, and then if we go down to in this version, it's line one thirty four. Yours should be around this area. You'll see uh, if the OS has list x adder. This is going to return true because it thinks it's running on Linux, but it's not running on Linux. And so when it gets down to here and does this OS list X adder, that's going to result in the syscall that fails. So um, this is not a, you know, something that would be acceptable upstream, but it's a hack that makes it work here. You can just replace this whole condition uh, with false to force it to be false. All right. So if we try that again, Uh, let me get a slow mirror. Come on. There we go. You can see that we don't get that error anymore. It's going to go ahead and get fetch the metadata for updates. This might take a couple of seconds. But then after that, I'll go ahead and explain what's going to happen next. Uh, RPM does a check to see, it knows how big the uncompressed in installed version of the program is going to be. So it checks for that amount of free disk space before it will try to do the install. Um, whatever mechanism it uses for determining what the free disk space is doesn't work in this environment. So um, there should be a way in the DNF config to, there's a DNF config option called disk space check, uh, and you can set it to one or one or zero. One, it does the check, zero, it shouldn't do the check. But due to a bug in the DNF code, it still does the check even if you set it to zero. So I'm going to show you a way that you can go into the code and you know force it to not do the disk check if this ever completes. Not having very much luck with the mirrors tonight.
Okay, there you go. So you see the disk space requirement here. So what you can do there is uh, go to user lib python site packages dnf rpm rpm transactions and we can go to line 108 there's you know depending on your version it should be around this and it's this it's this filter disk space and this is the line that uh, should evaluate to true but it doesn't so what we're going to do is we're just going to take that out entirely and unindent this line and now when we do this it works and we got wget and we can you know, wget whatever google.com and we can install other packages and stuff like that. Uh, one thing that I've left out in here is that uh, you want to block updates to Python 3 and DNF, the packages themselves, after you do this, because if you update DNF, it will overwrite the hack that we just did. Uh, hopefully I can get the code to fix the bug in DNF upstream as far as uh, Python not thinking, uh, figuring out that list X adder is not supported. Don't know how to fix that yet, but this is a way to, to do it, I have, I'm have. i going to write a blog so that and if you like to follow this through in text format, you can go there, put that in the description below. Catch you in the next one.